This is an accumulation of letters in the home of my father-in-law. Over the period of a couple of months, two, three months, The envelopes started arriving in his mailbox when he was about 89 or 90, and they were festooned with pretty stamps from all over the world and official-looking insignia. But of course, the best thing was what the envelopes contained, which were effusive letters of congratulations for having won contests and sweepstakes and lotteries all over the world. First, it was a trickle, which became a flood which turned into a tsunami of hundreds of calls every week from cheery, chatty, charming people who engaged him in hours-long conversations about his life, his activities, his friends, the causes he supported. And they ended these conversations by asking him for money, but only for small amounts of money. $25 here, $36 there. And he had no trouble writing those checks because after all, they represented very, very good causes. We'll never know exactly how much he lost because it came from so many different places and it was masked in, in so many different ways. These people had gotten into his head and that's what they're so good at. The ultimate tragedy is that when he passed away, fairly recently in his mid-90s, he was plagued with anxiety about the broken promises that he had promised his friends that he would send them money, and he couldn't do that anymore. So they haunted him to his grave. Is there anything more depraved than that? I'd like to express my appreciation for all the work that AARP is doing to force these predators out of the shadows because they can only operate when people don't see what they're doing. And AARP has made this a national priority and a state priority to help all of us as, as seniors, as senior caregivers, as family members, protect those we care about and protect ourselves. Scammers really try to target people who they think will be an easy victim, and unfortunately they see seniors as potentially easy victims. And this is because they figure seniors have been working and they're retired now, they probably have a nice nest egg, so they've got some money worth trying to steal. And often seniors might be living alone, and they'll think that seniors don't have anyone to talk to or ask questions about potential scams, so they're more likely to fall for it. Scammers will go out of their way to try to figure out things about you. They might know your name, maybe they even know your birth date or the last four numbers of your social security number, but they don't necessarily know anything more about you. But they'll ask leading questions to try to trick you into saying something about yourself and then they can pretend that they already knew that information or had that information. They're trying to establish a long-time relationship with you, so perhaps you give them $25 the first time, and then when they ask you for $200 the next time, you might be more likely to give it because, oh, they keep giving back with these different gifts, um, so the person sticking around, it's not like they're taking my money and running, but they will just continue to milk you and milk you and milk you until there's nothing left. Scammers are really good at what they do and they will find a way to sort of draw you in to make you a victim. And you know, people are often so embarrassed when they realize they've been taken by a scam so they refuse to speak about it, they don't report it to authorities, they don't tell their loved ones. And part of the problem with that is that you can't get the word out then. One of the most important things you can do when you're experiencing scams or getting phone calls about scams is to talk about it and spread the news and report it. And one of the best tools that you can use is the AARP Fraud Watch, which allows you to share your experiences with other people so others in your area can see what's trending and what kind of scams are happening around you. You shouldn't stay silent about it. Tell a loved one, tell the authorities. You might not see somebody arrested or you might not get your money back, but it's really important to let others know what's happening so hopefully they don't become a victim. The AARP Fraud Watch Network gives you access to information about how to protect yourself and your family. Non-members and members alike 
can get our watchdog alerts, stay up on con artists' latest tricks, and find out what to do if you've been victimized. It's free for everyone because AARP is committed to safeguarding Americans' financial futures. AARP has this great resource booklet that you can find online on aarp.org slash fraudwatchnetwork where we have tons of information that people can use to empower themselves and their families about preventing becoming a victim of identity theft. So that's aarp.org slash fraudwatchnetwork.